as my tears are mentioned already, I have now uh, yeah, the chance to uh, um, talk about automation ML in OPC UA. And as you also mentioned, the thing is in this case that both of them have their own world, have their own, yeah, um, own reasons why they are existing. Um, but the, if you combine them, they work really good together. So if you look at um, yeah the purposes why we are doing this, um, I'm just so we have normally continuous changes in production systems, and this means that we have to reconfigure um, at least the hardware, but also the software normally. And in the software part, um, the thing is that we have a lot of tools which are used, for example, engineering tools uh, for mechanical engineering, for electrical engineering, and all these tools produce data in the end. And um, this is yeah, the, the first part where you have a bunch of inhomogeneous yeah, things to bring together, uh, even if you are um, at, in the offline phase, in the engineering phase. If you then change to the online phase um, and you gather the real production data, there is the, yeah, the thing that you have lots of inhomogeneous hardware, but also protocols which you have to bring together. So both of them, both phases have their challenges and um, yeah, both uh, phases have also their, how to say, their, their own ways of solving these challenges. So if we now look at um, Automation ML, um, Automation ML was designed to exchange engineering data. This means that, for example, uh, CAD data or electrical planning data or even the PSC code um, is constructed, is um, engineered in different phases. And if you go from one phase to another, um, the challenge is to bring the information from one phase to another. And normally there is sometimes, if you are in the tool chain of one vendor, you have the possibility to exchange this information. But normally you do not only have tools from one vendor if you're not, how to say, a big player, for example. So this means that you are um, yeah, in charge of combining those tools in an efficient way. Um, and Automation ML is just a data exchange format, not more. So no tool functionality, nothing at all what our, uh, OPC UA does. Um, but it, yeah, it gives you a possibility to bring information together in the engineering phase. So this means that with Automation ML you have a semantic description of your plant. You can, for example, describe, and this is the picture what also Matthias had, plant topology information. You can describe, for example, your communication networks. You can describe logical networks. You can describe physical networks. You can describe the attributes of your components in your plant, but also things like the geometry information to, an, for example, existing robot. And um, the thing is that Automation ML does not define any new XML format, but it bases on different existing XML formats which were already standardized and just defines rules, how to use them, how to combine them. So this means Automation ML's IC standard is not a long specification, but only some, yeah, uh, uh, some, some sites to read, to say it like this. Um, after that, we have, on the other hand, in the online phase, if you come to reprocess signals, and that's why you are all here, um, OPC UA has possibility for an efficient communication, but also information management. And um, as Matthias mentioned, OPC UA in, yeah, in the beginning, um, everybody wants to get OPC UA running. But if people discover what OPC UA gives us, um, yeah, possibility, um, the information models are getting more and more important because normally in an application you are in a specific domain, you have a specific language, you're dealing with specific information and um, yeah, in fact it's, it's natural that you want to deal with this information also in your communication systems. So for example, if you have a very very homogeneous world with only one PLC vendor, with only one, for example, um, um, visualization system, um, you do not have a need for OPC UA. 
But if you're in the real world, you um, have different PLC vendors, different devices uh, which are communicating. And to bring all those together, this is the challenge for OPC UA. But this means also that the information models, they also have to fit together. So if we are, are looking at OPC UA, um, what, what I'm always talking about uh, are these, these information models, which can be defined on the one hand by the vendors itself, but also by, um, yeah, by, by um, creating such companion specifications. And the real value of OPC UA in the end comes for a semantic interoperability by these companion specifications. This means that if we have a look at automation ML and OPC UA together, um, I, I'm always thinking of OPC UA um, by, by means of a little worker, uh, which has a screwdriver which can make things. And, uh, but he needs some, some tools for this, and one of the tools is automation ML. So this means that um, yeah, our, our key, our challenge um, is on the one hand, to integrate automation ML in OPC UA, this means that we put this information model, which is created by the automation ML description, completely into an OPC UA server. For example, um, if you have a, a production line and you have different PLCs which are uh, delivering data by OPC UA servers, you could have an aggregating OPC UA server gathering data from each of the PLCs and integrating them into one aggregated information uh, model. The goal is for sure to communicate but also to, um, yeah, to give automation ML uh, how to say a life, because the data exchange format is something static. This means you have an XML description. This XML description is fixed in one point in time. And if you have um, yeah, the involvement over time, you have different versions of that XML uh, description, but it's not a living document. And by in inserting automation ML into a PC UA, um, yeah, you, you really make this um, make this usable. So the, uh, yeah, the result is that you can exchange automation uh, models via OPC UA, but you can also base your information um, acquiring um, on OPC UA. And um, for sure, um, instead of creating your OPC UA information models from scratch, you can use an existing automation ML model from the engineering build and use it in the online world. So the use cases, whenever you have re-engineering or maintenance, uh, whenever in your, your engineering models, your engineering data changes over time, you can use OPC UA in combination. On the other hand, um, it's the other way around. OPC UA um, yeah, can be built up uh, based on configuration data. So to connect, connect from an OPC UA client to a server, you need to know where the server is, what information it provides, and how to connect to it. And this means the other way around, that you are able, if you have your engineering models, and for example, you describe your PLCs, um, your PLC programs, your variables in automation ML, you can also describe how to access those variables via OPC UA. So this means that you can integrate this OPC UA configuration information into automation ML models so that you have the information for the online phase already available at the offline phase. Only if it's possible if you know this information for sure. But uh, the thing is then that you, are, yeah, you simplify the creation of uh, your network um, by um, already having all those parameters. So if you look at this picture, if you have different phases in engineering, for example, a MCAT and ECAT or PLC programming or even uh, virtual commissioning, for example, you can use automation ML to exchange data between all these phases. Um, you could draw uh, lines from every, tr every box. Um, but on the other hand, uh, you, you normally have one, how to say, one, one data box there. And with automation ML, you are able to let this data evolve over time. So you can really 
yeah, use automation ML uh, not for the reason it was designed for, for online communication of process signals, but also for the exchange of engineering information. And um, this is also one reason or one thing from OPC UA that it's really, um, yeah, has the possibility to extend it, to use it for other use cases, for other applications, because the, the base mechanisms, they are defined, and what you do with them is at your own, um, yeah, at your own ideas, at your own, um, how to say, at your own work. So, um, this cooperation was not the fastest one, I would say, <laughs> because we are already dealing with that since 2013, when the first cooperation statement between OPC Foundation and the Automation ML organization was signed. And since then, we are like these little workers and try to push Automation ML through the door of OPC UA. But in the end, uh, we arrived at a how to stay uh, a, um, a stable status, so the transformation rules, they are already defined. We have for sure some partners um, which work on this uh, since the beginning of 2014. And um, yeah, at least we have a reference implementation where, where you can really put in automation ML and get out OPC UA XML, which can directly import, for example, in the Unified Automation SDK or in the other um, OPC UA SDKs, which support XML import of information models. Um, what we have is that um, we say we have um, two views on the data. We have, on the one hand, OPC UA users, which are used to the, the information model structures of OPC UA, for example, the objects node, the types node, and all that. On the other hand, we have this automation ML users, which are used to, yeah, how to say, entering the hierarchy by um, several other key nodes. And um, we try to bring those things together in, in creating an address uh, space, an information model, where we have those two um, entering points. So on the one hand, we allow the OPC UA users, which are used to OPC UA, to enter the information model um, like they know it. And on the other hand, we also have organizing nodes for automation ML. So this means that if you look at an um, address space, you have, for example, the, the whole things which define automation ML on, on the first level, um, but you also have linked them to, for example, the objects folder um, or the types folder. And to show how to use it, if, for example, you have an automation ML model, which is XML, so this looks very similar to the graphics Matthias has, and you translate it into OPC UA XML, then you can just easily integrate it as internal data model in an OPC UA server, for example, for aggregating servers, but also for uh, servers dealing with MES, for example. And um, how this could look like is, um, for example, if you have normal Siemens PLCs, and you have an OPC UA server running um, yeah, uh, above them. So for example, from Maticron, from Siemens, so this is completely independent of the vendors. Um, and then you could have an aggregating OPC UA server, which gets all the data from all the PLCs and integrates them into the automation ML model. Then I really have a complete view on my plant, on the planning data, but also on the online data, um, yeah, which, which is related to it. So this means, to show a picture, if on the one hand you have an automation model, you transform it into OPC UA and look at it by an OPC UA client, this looks quite similar. So what we really did is to import all the information, uh, automation ML information into OPC UA. And for sure, we also have a reference implementation because we are Fraunhofer from Germany. Um, we have such demo plants in our house and there we are really using this to show examples from the MES level, to show examples for, um, for um, human-oriented visualization and other things. But in the end, it's like that, that in, yeah, in the past you had 
signals coming from devices and you connected them to different applications, for example, to visualization tools, to evaluation or analysis tools, or to other applications. Um, then you had the, the next step, um, even a little bit with OPC, so you group the signals into groups, and you had the chance to go on to those groups, so you had information instead of pure data, and uh, you, are, you have the possibility to connect those applications to these groups of information. But now, as we are talking, for example, in Germany, every time about Industry 4.0, so I'm not a big friend of this, but you cannot go with it. Um, these semantic models are really one thing which is very important for Industry 4.0. So the knowledge, the meaning of the information directly uh, coupled with the signals. And this is what OPC UA brings with these information models. So um, this is why OPC UA was also named in this um, application strategy for Industry 4.0. But in the end, um, yeah, just to conclude this, um, we have this specification which describes how to say transformation rules. So you know if you find an automation ML object or an automation ML interface or something like that, how to translate it into the OPC UA world. Um, we have on the other end, um, yeah, ideas or not already published um, yeah, ideas um, about how to um, um, input configuration information of OPC UA communication into automation ML and are also on the way to uh, yeah, get this out. And um, on the other hand, we are dealing with a lot of harmonization with other companion specifications because automation ML uses some of the ISA 95 functional structure. Um, automation ML describes devices. Automation ML describes communication uh, frameworks. Automation ML uses PLC Open, and for all of them, there's already something um, yeah existing at the companion specification level in OPC UA. So the Automation ML working group has the challenge to uh, yeah to integrate to harmonize all this to make things really running, and not that anybody who is using ISA 95 cannot use this because uh, the ways, for example, ISA 95 is realized in OPC UA and in Automation ML are different. So this is what we are currently dealing with. Um, and this harmonization task is not so simple, um, but we are on a good way. And I think that this is also the perhaps the message uh, for, from my side for today that um, with all these companion specifications, you get a lot of information, a lot of knowledge into OPC UA, but you have to be sure that in your domain all the things are fitting together. So, for example, in this automation ML uh, case, it's really evident that all these companion specifications do not define the same things at two different points, for example. And with this, I'm already at the end, and um, I, I'd like to answer your questions. Thank you.